Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10, live on Channel's television. A quick reminder of our top stories now. People's Democratic Party alleges bank account of its vice presidential candidate, Peter Obi, frozen by agents of government. EFCC distances itself from claim. Presidential candidate of Ally Congress Party of Nigeria, Dr. Obi Ezekwesili, seeks increased budgetary allocation to roads considered to be the country's economic lifelines. And former presidential aide, media aide, Dr. Doni Okukwe, claims political witch hunts as EFCC operatives storm his home in Lagos over alleged violation of the Cybercrime Act. And hundreds detained by French police as anti-government protesters hit streets across the country in the fourth weekend of violent demonstrations. ChannelsTV.com has more information for you. And on YouTube.com forward slash channels web, you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news and updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app have an eyewitness feature that you can use to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. A fatal accident happened today at the early hours of today at the Cara Bridge end of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, which left three people dead and many others were injured. It's the second time in two days that an accident would occur on that stretch of the expressway, both involving heavy duty vehicles. And just like yesterday, today's incident caused a gridlock for outbound commuters who were eventually diverted by traffic officials to share the carriageway with vehicles coming into Lagos. Road safety officials at the scene confirmed that five vehicles were also involved in the accident, including two trucks and three private cars. The wreckage has since been cleared. And no fewer than 20 shops and residential houses at the popular station in Ahmed Wallowe in Kaduna State have been burnt down in the late night fire outbreak. The fire incident, which was attributed to a power surge, occurred at about 8 p.m. on Friday when traders had retired from their day's business. Many of those who lost their belongings to the inferno have been counting their losses and asking government for aid. They can explain. You know why? Because nobody is there. The people that are there are the people that live inside the compound. There are few people that are inside the compound. You understand? So they only say they see a smoke of lights inside shops like that. So before coming to this place, I before coming to the under 30 minutes, I see that something is beyond control. It's just within 10, 15 minutes. It's beyond control. You know, in a year we sell electronics. You understand? At least like five shops. You understand? Pro no, it's uh, five or um, ten shops. Actually, you understand? Two buildings. At least, let rough estimate, at least 150 million. Actually, I can't really ascertain how it happened. But I was called upon late yesterday night, around 8 p.m. The shop got born to the arches. Before rushing down here, we could have a small little thing to bring out. As you can see, it's not only my store around there, over 150 million goods we lost here. Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria, PASAN, appears set to continue with its protest next week if the management of the National Assembly fails to meet its demands. This is coming from the chairman of PASAN, Musa Bature, who insisted that the body's right to protest is backed by the Constitution and Trade Union Act. While appreciating the efforts of the Senate President and the Speaker of the House, the union leader asked the management of the Assembly to do the needful to avert a repeat of the action. While thanking the political leadership for their intervention, the leadership of National Body of Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria, PASAN, as well as zonal leadership and members of the two chapters that make up the FCT zone, namely the National Assembly Service Commission and Public Complaint Commission, we hereby reiterate that the proposed indefinite strike action 
that will ground all legislative activities of National Assembly will commence as early as scheduled if the demands are not met as promised. When, when beggars dies, there are no comets seen, but heaven themselves blessed for the death of princes. So by this, by this, by this, what I meant is that we've been empowered by the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is the supreme to any other law. And we've also been backed up by the Trade Union Act to doing, to doing what we are doing so far. So it's left for the leadership, it's left for the leadership to know how to take this situation and to avoid any perceived embarrassment that it might, the, the House might receive. So I think as far as we are concerned, we are doing what is legitimately right. More stories now. The African Network for Environmental and Economic Justice have staged a march to commemorate the global war against corruption in Benin City, the Edo State Capital. The leader of the group, David Ugolo, describes the fight against corruption as a frontal war that must be won by the government with the active participation of civil society and indeed all Nigerians, irrespective of their political affiliations. He also expressed his delight over the recovery of the Abacha loot and the utilization of the funds in finance and social investment initiatives. African Network for Economic and Environmental Justice, ANIJ, leads a peaceful procession of members of civil society groups through some major streets in Benin City to drum up support for the eradication of all forms of corruption. We as civil society in Nigeria, we have also decided that we should use today as part of joining that global force against corruption. And we are also using this opportunity again to reinforce our message to our government to put priority in tackling corruption because corruption is one of the big problem that is on the money development in Nigeria. While commending social investment initiatives of government, the Anish leader charges governance of South South states to sign up to the utilization package of recovered looted Abacha funds. The most of the poor people, poorest of the poor, are all spread across the South South state. As we speak now, it's only Cross River state that is enjoying the cash transfer benefit because the other state government have not signed on to it. Even particularly a those state government is here to sign on to the cash transfer program. That for me is something that is very serious and I call on Governor Basaki to see it as an opportunity to reach in out to the very poorest of the poor in Edo State. A female Edo civil society leader calls on women to be more politically aware as the nation prepares for the polls. Which is why we are doing all we can to encourage our women to come out en masse to vote their kind to this race the very ones they know are credible for this, to this race so that they will be able to do more than what they, they are really doing now. As the 2019 elections bacon in Nigeria, the scribe of the National Youth Council of Nigeria, those state branch, did not mince words in galvanizing the youth for greater participation. We appreciate uh, President Muhammad Buhari for assenting to the Not Too Young to Run bill that has given a platform for young people to also come out to vote for leadership positions. Having said that, of course, the issue of corruption is now even uh, romancing the Nigerian youth of today. If more Nigerians and the political class can work together. Corruption can indeed be checked in order to engender all-round development. Osazobaza Channels, Television News. Residents of Ikiti State say they are worried over the security situation in the state, despite assurances given by relevant agencies there. Their fear arises from the series of bank robberies and other criminal activities recorded during the yearly, every year, believed that believing that the police can do more with government at all levels to increase their commitment and ensure that citizens have a sense of safety. Sad faces. <laughs> Protests. <laughs> These are the marks left with families and community members of victims of the recent bank robbery attacks and other criminal activities in Ikiti State. From the former commissioner of the Federal Character Commission, Bumiojo, to the treasurer of the All Progressives Congress in Ikiti State, Moses Adoyi, and a monarch stabbed while returning from a palace meeting, Oba Badebo Ogunshaki, it's been tears and anguish. Something urgent need be done about our security. People operate like they own the land. They were so free. 
mean? The legalin pushing our people around, they ask them to come to Waramoko, move to Ibuji, come back to Barado, all sorts of things. And eventually, shot our man, took our money. Something needs to be done. We can't keep on like this. Members of the State House of Assembly and the judiciary were also not spared with the death of a lawmaker, Michael Adedeji, who was attacked with a machete, and a lawyer who was abducted and later killed. So far, four banks have been robbed this year with nine people killed, including five police officers. The affected banks remain shut till date. But stakeholders believe government and the police must step up their game and beat these organized criminal elements with superior intelligence. From the information we gathered, the thieves, they are already on ground before the arrival of the money. So when they came, they allowed them to leave. After just uh, 40 minutes of their departure, the, 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 the execution of the, uh, the exercise began. There is need for a protection unit in the police force. We could call it bank protection unit that we have and the helicopter for swift and quick response. Despite the huge worries expressed by the people, the police insist they're on top of the situation. Honestly, we're on top of that game. Uh, we made some arrests. Very soon, very soon, we are going to go public to let the Nigerians who and who were arrested and uh, the evidence we have against them, and of course they will be charged to court. The state government also gives an assurance that it will live up to its responsibilities. The government will be the agent of security and we will support the security agency to do their duty to the best of their ability with all the tools that they require in order to perform effectively. I'm very concerned about this and I'm working very hard to ensure that we put a stop to this bit of violence. With the assurances now given by the police and the state governor, it's hoped that the ugly trend will be put to a halt. But this will depend on the authorities walking the talk with the local communities complementing their efforts with timely information. The executive director of the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, Mr. Faisal Shoaib, is hoping that the agency would be able to provide more efficient basic healthcare services at the primary healthcare level in 2019 when the federal government's basic health care fund will be fully implemented. Mr. Shoaib, who spoke on the sidelines of a meeting with staff of the agency in Abuja, says that President Muhammad Buhari has already released about 51 billion naira for the purpose of providing basic health care services next year. He, however, noted that the inability of citizens to take ownership of the primary health care systems in the communities remains one major ch challenge. One of the challenges that we've uh, faced, of course, has been around how we can improve the knowledge of uh, community members to demand for primary health care services, right? How do people go to the health care uh, facility and ask tough questions of the health workers around how their primary health care centers are being managed? How do parents on their own take their children for routine immunization? How do people ensure that when they are sick, they go to the primary health care center and do not wait until uh, they have suffer from complications. Uh, in the past, we've had challenges with uh, funding for immunization and primary health care services, especially in the states where uh, there are no budgetary releases for primary health care. But as a result of the advocacy, as a result of engagement with all stakeholders, governors, we're beginning to see a situation where uh, more states are paying attention to primary health care. So we're hoping that we'll be able to overcome some of these uh, challenges. But these were sort of these challenges that we faced in uh, 2018. So what is going to be very prominent in 2019 is the implementation of uh, President Buhari's Basic Healthcare Provision Fund. So with the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund, some 51 billion uh, Naira has already been released. Much more will be released in 2019 towards providing basic health care for all Nigerians in a way that ensures that people do not have to pay out of pocket uh, for basic health care services. When the news of 10 returns, Central Bank of Nigeria to establish National Microfinance Bank in partnership with NIPOST across the country. That's some business news. Join us again.